Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up your copy of Slime Incorporated. It's my first ever detective novel as private investigator Cole Eustick solves a case of murder and dirty politics set against the backdrop of the Idaho gubernatorial election. The book is available as a paperback, in ebook, or an audiobook through audible.com or the iTunes store. Now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby. Engaged to death. Mystery is my hobby. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barton Drake speaking. For tonight's drama, I've selected case history number 72 from my book, Mystery is My Hobby. I call it Engaged to Death. Tonight's story took place three weeks ago in New York. I'd been invited to attend a party given by Senator Ralph Hobart to announce the engagement of his niece, Diane Hobart, to Mark Russell, youthful millionaire. Oh, there you are, Diane. Ma, darling, where have you been? <laughs> Wandering around, looking for you. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, but darling, should we? After all the parties for us, you know. Well, sure it is. Which means we should have a few special privileges. <laughs> Come on, but then. That's something important I want to tell you. Important? I suspect this is a trick, young man. A trick? Me? Woman, how dare you accuse me of trickery? <laughs> Come on. Oh, here we are. Oh, yikes. Good to get away from that jabbering mob for a while. Oh, but darling, you shouldn't call our friends a jabbering mob. <laughs> now, what is this important thing you have to tell me? Well, uh, several. First of all, you're very beautiful. Oh, Mark. Second, I, I love you very much. Darling. Third, we're going to be very, very happy as Mr. and Mrs. Mark Russell. <laughs> Mark Russell, did you get me in here, darling? Oh, hardly. This is the most important reason I want to kill off. Come here. Uh, oh, Mark. Love me, darling. Oh, more than I ever thought it possible to love anyone. Are you happy? He's so happy that it, it hurts. <laughs> you say those things just the way I like to hear them. That's why I keep asking you. Well, I'm glad I do things the way you like, Mark. It's important that a wife should know what her husband likes. Oh, darling, just stay as you are. That's all I ask. And now for the surprise. A surprise? Sure. Our engagement party, isn't it? Oh. Isn't it customary for the groom to be to give the bride to be a present? Oh, but Mark, you've given me so much oh, already. Oh, let me see. I got... Oh. oh, good heavens. Oh, what's the matter? I must have left it up in my room. <laughs> How do you like it? Fine thing. The groom brings a gift to the bride and then forgets he has it. <laughs> It's probably my other suit. I must have forgotten it when I changed. I'll get it. It'll only take a minute. You better not take more. I'm dying of curiosity. Why don't you go away? Be back in two shakes. Oh, the old dear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Diane? Don't you know me, Diane? Paul. It, it can't be. It can't be Paul. It is Paul, Di. It's your kid brother, Paul. I hope you'd be glad to see me. Oh, Paul. Paul, darling. Glad to see me. Put your arms around me. Hold me tight. This is just, just like I dreamed you would be. Hey, quit crying, will you? You'll have me doing it in a minute. Oh, oh Paul. Quit it, sis. Quit it. I've only got a few minutes. A few minutes? Oh, then... I escaped, sis. Last night. Oh. I couldn't stand it any longer. I guess I wasn't made to spend the rest of my days in jail. Oh, Paul, you shouldn't have. Uncle Ralph was trying. We all were trying to get you paroled. Yes, I know, for six years. I couldn't wait any longer. Paul, won't they? Won't they? Capture me? Not alive. I'd rather be dead than go back. Oh, Paul. I mean it, sis, I would. 
Listen, I've got to get out of here now. Someone might come in. I just wanted to see you once more to... to ask you something. Yes, Paul. You don't believe I murdered Jean Falmouth, do you? Of course I don't, darling. I'll never believe it. It was an accident. I know it was. Thanks, sis. That's all I wanted to hear. You were always swell, Di. The only one who believed I was anything but rotten. You weren't bad, Paul. You weren't. I've only given you another chance. People who are branded killers don't get a second chance, Di. Don't let's forget that. Take care of yourself, sis. Oh. Tell Mark Russell that he's lucky. Tell him an old friend said to say that. Don't go, Paul. Stay here. Give yourself up. Let her go off and meet Not a chance, honey. Look, Mark Russell doesn't even know you have a brother who's a jailbird. Think I'm going to ruin your chance at happiness? It doesn't matter, Paul. Let us try and help. Mark will understand. The heck he will. Guys are funny when it comes to their wife's relatives. It wouldn't help Uncle Ralph either to know about me. This is his first term in office. Oh, Paul, Paul, those things are so unimportant. Trying to run away like this will hurt you so much. Please. It's no use, honey. I'm going now. Just forget I ever existed. I won't see you again, Di. Will you kiss me once more? Aren't you in the wrong pair of arms, darling? Uh, Betty, I... I want you to... An me... old uh, friend, darling. Oh, this is rich. The lily-white Diane Hobart found necking with an old friend at her own engagement party. Oh, what a juicy bit of gossip. That isn't so. Betty, I... Please, this is my... Diane, don't. You can't. Think what it means to both of us. But I... Oh, come, darling. You might as well introduce me. We'll all have to meet him sooner or later, you know. You won't. I mean... Oh, Betty, do you have to tell everyone? Oh, so that's it. A forgotten lover come to life. Dropped in to say his fond farewells and place his tender blessings upon your eager young lips. And then, bingo, he's gone into limbo. And little Diane, the sweet memory of the parting still lingering in her innocent thoughts, goes on and sacrifices herself to the Mark Russell millions. Nuts! Betty, how can you be so, so vulgar? Vulgar, she says. Aren't you being a little presumptuous, my dear? If I ever saw a more vulgar display... Stop it, Betty, stop it! Nothing that you say is true. Nothing that I say is true. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Then you won't mind me repeating it to Mark, will you? Repeating it to Mark? Betty, you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Listen, you double-crossing little cheat. Be quiet. I... Someone's coming. I'm getting out of here. So long, Diane. Sorry. No, wait. Don't go. Uh, she's waiting in here for me, Uncle Ralph. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Yes. oh. Hello, Betty. Come in, Mark, darling. You just missed the feature attraction. Feature attraction? What are you talking about? Diane, is anything wrong? Tell him, darling. Or I will. Betty, you... you... Oh, please, Betty. Well, there seems to be drama going on here from which you and I are excluded, Mark. Uh, Diane, suppose you let us in on the conspiracy, hmm? Oh, Uncle Ralph, I don't know what to do. Well, there, now... In heaven's name, what's this all about? Betty, have you been... Have I been what, darling? Kneeling, Diane, because she took you away from me? Oh, no, hardly. I've merely been observing Diane in a rather amorous prenuptial sequence. You know what? Diane, what's she saying? I, I don't know, Mark. There, there was a mistake. I mean, Betty came in, and I... And What? Tell him, darling. Tell him how I came in and found you kissing another man. A rather striking young man, I might add. You what? Diane, is this true? Uh, yes, I, I mean... Diane! Please, Mark, please, it isn't what you think. It isn't what I think. Oh, really, Diane, Mark isn't an idiot, you know. When you admit kissing another man, it's only natural for him to be curious. No, no, I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Diane, tell me it isn't true. It isn't true, Mark. Not the way Betty means it. It just... Well, it just... Oh, I can't explain. Diane, if there was another man here, who was he? Yes, tell us, darling. Where he was doesn't matter. What I want to know is... Is Betty telling the truth? If she is, oh, I'll... Oh, Mark, darling, if you don't believe me, you better look for yourself. He can't be far away. He went out through the French doors. Why don't you go look? Diane, tell me. Is what Betty says true? Answer him, Diane. He has a right to know. Go on, darling. Tell them. 
Yes, 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 it's true, it's true. Betty did find me kissing another man. Is that what you want to know? Now leave me alone. Leave me alone. Mark, what are you going to do? What do you think? Mark! Put down that letter opener. Where are you going, Mark? Going? Going out after this other man whom my so-called future wife thinks it's all right to kiss. If I find him, I'm going to kill him. I'd like to speak to Inspector Danton, please. This is Barton Drake calling. Oh, yes, Mr. Drake. Just a minute. Inspector Danton, Barton Drake calling. Okay. Hello, Bart. Thought you went to an engagement party. I did, Inspector. I'm at Senator Hobart's house now. I was wondering if you could come out. Nothing doing. I don't go for second-hand invitations. If they didn't want me in the this first place... This would be an official call, Inspector. I have a mystery to solve, and I need your help. Huh? A mystery? You would get mixed up in something like that. Okay, who's been knocked off? No one's been able to identify the body yet, Inspector. Apparently, he's a stranger to everyone here. A sneak thief, eh? Somebody tried to snitch the engagement presents and got caught at it. Inspector, and... if that's all there were to it, I wouldn't be calling you. The motive is far more important than robbery, and the victim is someone whom no one wants to admit recognizing. Does that interest you sufficiently, or are you going to sit there and ask a lot more questions? Okay, okay, you don't have to get sore. Keep your shirt on. I'll be out. Very well, I'll be waiting for you. Uh, and, Inspector... Yeah? Uh... I'd rather you came alone. For reasons that I'll explain later, it's important that no one from the department sees the victim until we have this mystery cleared up. Well, that's about the... Thank you, it. Inspector. See you in about an hour. Goodbye. <laughs> hello, Duffer. Oh, hello, Senator. I'll just talk to Inspector Danton. He'll be over here shortly. Oh, fine. Uh, I was wondering if it would be possible to have the uh, uh, body removed. Uh, I'm get... sorry. I have no authority to allow the body to be removed. However, there's one thing I can suggest. Yes? You can uh, tell all but two of your guests they can go home. All but two? But who are those two, Mr. Drake? Mark Russell and Betty Berkeley. Mark and Betty? Does that mean that you suspect one of them of committing the crime? I mean that they are two of four people I believe had motives. Motives? Well, how could anyone have a motive for killing a sneak thief? I mean, other than the fact that he was attempting to rob the house. If attempted robbery were the only reason for the murder, an alarm would have been raised immediately, Senator. A person who fights off a thief doesn't keep quiet about it for an hour. Oh, I think you're trying to make a big project out of this, Drake. It's a simple case of attempted robbery with the thief being caught and accidentally killed. Hmm. Is that why your niece suddenly disappeared from her own engagement party, Senator? Eh? When I found her, she was in tears and refused to give any explanation. Mm. Young Mark Russell refused to talk to his bride-to-be. And Betty Berkeley is going about looking like the cat that swallowed the canary. Oh, nonsense. Your imagination is running away with you, Drake. Is it? Tell me, Senator, are you quite sure that you didn't recognize the murder victim? I? Good heavens, no. I've already told you I didn't. Why did you ask? Because I think you're lying. I've reason to suspect that you know him better than anyone here. Hello, Inspector. Come in. Hi, Bart. You know, I've been thinking about that screwball conversation we had on the telephone. There's something cockeyed about this deal, and I want to know what it is before I start pulling your chestnuts out of the fire. Really, Inspector? Yeah, really, Inspector. That's what I mean, that tone of voice. There's something, some funny business going on around here, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be the goat. <laughs> Inspector, sometimes I think you don't trust me. Ah, there's nothing funny about murder. You know that. Come on, I've got to show you my suspects. Oh, so now you got a bunch of suspects. Why don't you tell me that over the telephone? Here we are. That tall gentleman wearing the double-breasted white linen suit is Senator Ralph Hobart. Yeah? The young lady holding the handkerchief to her eyes is the senator's niece, Diane Hobart. Uh-huh. The young man... Okay, okay. What is this, a tour of inspection? Why don't you deduce me? This long-range stuff isn't getting us anywhere. All in good time, Inspector. First, I have a more important introduction to make. As I was saying, the young man is Mark Russell, Miss Hobart's betrothed. 
And the other young lady is Betty Berkeley, a friend. Now, come this way, please. Wait a minute, Bart. I want... Oh, Mr. Drake. Yes, Senator. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Inspector Norden. It's about time. Hi. Good evening, Inspector. Uh, Mr. Drake, I know you asked us all to stay in this room. Yes. But I'd like permission to go up to my room and uh, change my clothes. Uh, frankly, a white linen suit at a time like this. You understand? <laughs> of course. Inspector, has the senator your permission to go up and change his suit? Huh? You're asking me? Oh, okay, okay. Go on, change your clothes, Senator. Only what I want to know is... Come <laughs> along, no, Inspector. Oh, oh. Just a minute. Now what? Why'd I give a dollar to know what kind of deal you're pulling if I didn't know you so well? What are you looking after the senator for? Mm-hmm. I just thought of something. Well, never mind. Come in here, please. I want you to meet our corpse, Inspector. What's he doing here? I thought the murder took place outside. It did, Inspector. I called Dr. Ainsworth. Had him come over and make the examination. Ainsworth? That old funny duddy. Since he's about to retire, I didn't think he'd bother to come out at night. I know, but you see, I have no authority to move the body, and Ainsworth won't talk. Won't talk? What's all this secrecy about? Aren't we going to tell anyone about this murder? Do you recognize the dead man, Inspector? Like it... Say, wait a minute. He does look familiar. I thought he would. Yes, sir. I can't place him, though. Still... That's I... fine, Inspector. Don't think too hard. I don't want you to place him yet. Now then, let's get down to facts. Facts. You haven't told me a fact for so long that I probably wouldn't believe it anyway. The victim was stabbed twice, Inspector. Once in the back and once in the chest. So I noticed. So that eliminates the possibility of suicide. It also eliminates the chance that the light knife was thrown. As a matter of fact, it establishes in my mind that the blows were delivered while in close contact. Wonderful, Mr. Drake. You certainly are sharp tonight. Thank you, Inspector Danton. The murder weapon was a letter opener, which I found several feet from where the victim lay. The handle was grass-stained, which indicated to me that the fingerprints had been wiped off. Well, well, now I suppose you're going to tell me that you know who murdered the guy. Not just yet, Inspector, although, of course, I know. <laughs> Not just yet. You... What? You know who the guilty party is? Yes, of course. I'm surprised you should ask, Inspector. But you know that I've been on the scene for more than two hours. Yeah. Foolish me. Well, who is it? In just a minute, I'll be able to... Oh, hello, Miss Berkeley. Come in. We're just about to go and have a talk with you. I thought you would, Barton. You want to ask me what happened in the den just before before it happened, don't you? Well, as a matter of fact... I, I... know. The Hobarts and Mark Russell are my friends. You dislike asking me to, well, to implicate them. And yet it's my duty. I'll not fail you, Barton. What she means is, Bart, that she's just dying to tell everything she knows. I beg your pardon. Who is this person, Barton? This person, Miss Berkeley, is Inspector Noah Danton. And as for telling us what happened in the den, it won't be at all necessary. Not necessary? But it's important. Yes, yes, I know, but I'm already aware of what happened in the den and what happened afterwards. You couldn't be. Oh, well, then stop me if I'm wrong, Miss Berkeley, please. You saw Diane and Mark Russell go into the den, and you were consumed with curiosity and jealousy. Oh, but the idea. Unable to stand it any longer, you went into the den yourself on some pretext and found Diane in the arms of another man. Yes. Diane was cheating, and at her own engagement party. <laughs> Don't try to make me out a jealous, vicious woman, Barton. What I did was natural and right. What else happened in the den, Bart? During the conversation that followed, the other man left, and shortly afterwards, Mark Russell and Senator Hobart came in. Okay, I can guess the rest. This babe here did her duty by telling what she knew, and young Russell threatened to kill the other man. Happens every day. Yes, that's approximately it, Inspector. Mark Russell grabbed up the letter opener and ran out of the house. The others followed him. So that put all four of the suspects outside the house at the time the murder was committed. Right, Inspector. Any one of the four had an opportunity to kill the unknown stranger. Any one of the four? Do you mean that, that I am considered one of the suspects? Oh, yes. Very definitely, Miss Berkeley. If you'll join the Inspector and me in the library in 15 minutes, I'll be glad to tell you why. <laughs> Mr. Drake, I'm sorry. I thought it would be Uncle Ralph. Hmm, you act profoundly disappointed, Miss Hobart. Is it because you're embarrassed at being left alone here with your fiancé and hope that your uncle would appear? Drake, sort of... going yeah. too far. You're sticking your nose in the things that don't concern you. Well, I'm going to make them concern me, Russell, whether you like it or not. As a matter of fact, before I get through, you're going to like it. Well, of all the conceited... First of all, Miss Hobart, I want you to know that I'm aware of the identity of the man who was murdered. Oh, yes, I can. I was suspicious from the first, but 
Now, Inspector Danton has confirmed my suspicions. Oh, no. Mr. Drake, you, you won't. Tell Mr. Russell who the unknown man was. Why, well, I'm sorry, Miss Hobart, but that's exactly what I intend doing. No, please. What difference does it make? Who cares who he was? You do, Russell. Oh, you should. Are you kidding? When I come in and find the girl I love, do you love her, Russell? Do I? How would you feel, Drake, if you were in my shoes? Well, frankly, if I really loved the girl, I'd give her a chance to explain. Oh, he did, Mr. Drake. Don't blame Mark. It's just an impossible situation. And I think if you were as deeply in love with Mark as you pretend, you'd have enough faith and trust to tell him your secret. As deeply in love as I pretend? Right. How can you say such a thing? It's you who created this impossible situation you speak of. I think you owe Mark Russell a trust of confidence. Diana, yeah, what's he talking about? He's telling me that I, I've been a fool, darling, and I think he's right. I couldn't tell you. Betty was there. Uncle Ralph had just been elected to the Senate, and Paul was told... Paul. Paul. Tell him, Miss Hobart. Paul is, was my brother. A long time ago, he was sent to jail. I didn't believe him guilty. I don't now. Yesterday, he escaped and came here to say goodbye to me. Oh, Diane, why didn't you tell me? I love you, Mark. Did you want to marry a girl whose brother was a convict? Betty Berkeley would have told the world. Oh, you little fool. What do I care who your brother was? Darling, it's you I'm in love with. This babe takes things literally, Bart. She says the 15 minutes are up, and now she wants to know why you suspect her of being the murderess. Well, it looks as though a reconciliation has been effected. The two lovebirds are back together again. Oh, really, Mark? Your scruples are a lot less exacting than I thought. Miss Berkeley, why don't you give up? Your attempts to create trouble are at this point rather pitiful. Are they? Well, if Mark wants to marry a little friend... Oh, keep quiet, will you? Now, look, Bart. My purpose in being here is to catch a murderer, not referee a lover's quarrel. If you know who our boy is, I think you better tell. Very well, Inspector. Now that the less important aspect of this affair is settled, I think we can go ahead. Russell, you had the letter opener when you ran from the den. What became of it? I... I don't know. I found Diane's... Diane's friend crouching behind some shrubbery near the highway. I guess he was waiting for a break in the traffic so he'd get across the street without being seen. Mm-hmm. And you attacked him? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He knocked me out. When I came to, he was gone, and so was the letter opener. Uh, Diane was bending over me. Well, that's a simple tale well told. The trouble is it doesn't prove anything. What's your story, Miss Hobart? When I came from the house, I saw Mark and... The other man fighting. I reached him just as Mark fell. I tried to bring him too. Uh huh. We're certainly getting places, aren't we? Okay, Miss Berkeley. I suppose you also made a beeline for the fallen hero without pausing to stab anyone. Yes, I did. Mark needed someone he could trust. So that leaves the senator. He'll probably tell us he went back to the house to get the smelling salt. Oh, um, well, Bart. Suppose you tell us which one of these innocent people is lying and why. None of them is lying, Inspector. Come in, Senator. You were standing outside the door listening, weren't you? Yes, yes, Mr. Drake. Yes, I heard it all. And you decided that there was little use in attempting to destroy the evidence? That's right, Drake. It was I who killed... Please, it won't be necessary to mention his name. I don't intend to. I'm not a fool, Drake. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to speak sharply. I understand what you're trying to do, and I, I appreciate it. Uncle Ralph, it... It was you. Please don't judge me too harshly, my dear. I, I didn't know at first that he had the letter opener. I I had to defend myself. Your mistake came, Senator, when you didn't explain at once that you killed him in self-defense. Even now, we're going to have a difficult time convincing Inspector Danton that you did not murder the man who attacked you. <laughs> The guy was Diane Hobart's brother, eh, Bart? Well, well. That's right, Inspector. It was a long time ago that Paul was sent to jail. And no one ever connected his name with Diane or the senator. And you figure they won't now, eh? Why should they, Inspector? There are a lot of people named Hobart in the world. Yeah, but... uh... Senator Hobart didn't murder Paul, Inspector. In the first place, I don't think he was the type of man who could murder anyone. Especially his own nephew. Yeah, but... In the second place, he didn't have the letter opener... Paul had it. That's right, isn't it? So it must have been Paul who did the attacking. Exactly. 
A simple case of self-defense. You see, Inspector, it's all up to you. Up to me? Uh, uh, thanks, pal. Well, we'll see what we can do. However, I'm not promising anything. Thank you, Inspector. You're welcome. Now, tell me how you knew Hobart was the one. He had a spot of blood on his double-breasted white linen suit, Inspector. He did? I didn't see it. Neither did I, but I knew it was there. How? It was simple, Inspector. A man wearing a double-breasted suit always buttons it from left to right. Hobart had his buttoned from right to left in order to hide the spot. Oh, you're very observing, Mr. Drake. It pays to be, Mr. Danton, when mystery is your hobby. Welcome back. Well, I think this episode does illustrate uh, a reason why I'm pretty comfortable uh, including uh, Barton Drake on Thursdays, even though he did not actually have any book written about him. Uh, Like all of the previous uh, incumbents on this day uh, for any length of time, because he really does kind of fit into a lot of that classic detective mold. And you can see uh, the way that he is concerned about making sure that the relationship is secured even more than uh, solving the mystery. And that's the type of thing you would occasionally see in some of the Poirot stories. I also did like how deflated the quote-unquote friend was when Inspector Danton just saw right through her. Just a great moment. I don't know if I'm the only one, but whenever they mentioned Mark Russell, I thought of the uh, famous, or I guess PBS famous, uh, political humorist. But again, that probably says more about me than it does the production. All right, well, listener comments and feedback now, and we have a new review in the Apple Podcast Store. Ian Mann uh, writes... Great host, good audio quality, very informative commentary at the end of each episode. Clean and great for all ages. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your review. And I also want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you so much to Delilah, Patreon supporter since December, currently supporting us at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Again, thank you so much for your support. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then we'll be back again next Thursday, another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. And, of course, next Tuesday, restarting the Airmail Mystery. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.